Oh, it, oh, it's here. It's here. Today is the day that we have all been waiting for. Football is back, baby. Take a look at all of our matchup breakdowns. Take a look at our starts of a week and make sure you subscribe for the season. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Go, 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 go. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time! Hey! 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 Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Welcome into the show. It's football time. Hey! Thursday, hey. September 10th, the <laughs> Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Andy Holloway, Judge <sighs> Giamatti, Al Borland. Oh. Did you join in? Were you a part oh, of that? Oh, they were in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody's in. It is. This is the most triumphant and glorious return of football that any of us has oh, ever my experienced. Goodness. It's really true. This is the biggest first day of football yes. since the first day of football. And honestly, that probably... And was, when was that? What was that date? That was uh, that ni- date? 1918. It was just <laughs> before the war, see? <laughs> What? <laughs> Why'd you turn it to an old timey reporter? Well, I mean, if it's nineteen, that's how they talk back then, Mike. Hey, uh, welcome in a jam packed episode of the podcast. We've got a lot of news to talk about. We've got matchups on the show. We've got starts of the week. We've got the return of a an infamous and famous segment at the oh. end of this show. I am just so ecstatic that that we're here. That we're talking about week one. A lot of you out there on Twitter at the FF Ballers have been messaging about our League of Record draft. I feel like we really haven't even left the studio because we were here late last night. Uh, Al Borland was almost falling over asleep <laughs> during that draft. How are you doing today, Al? I feel rested. I'm okay. excited for some football. And how do you feel about your draft? I feel like I could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You and I made a trade in that draft. Yeah, that was a good trade. I yeah. think it was a great trade for both teams. And I, I hate up, that because yeah. you're both in my division. I traded up to acquire Jonathan Taylor <laughs> in last night's draft. I, you know, I just want, there's a place that the Jonathan Taylors, Antonio Gibsons, and uh, even Dobbins, Akers, the rookies, where they go in drafts, but you all, everybody kind of wants them just sitting there on the bench, if not in the lineup, just to, what if something special happens? That, look, that's what fantasy football yeah. is, man. Yeah. I, I don't want, oh, here's boring player. And the, brum, 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 brum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't need the tuba no. going up and down the field. Sorry, tuba players. Did you, I don't know. If, did, did you guys see the other day uh, a tuba player tweeted at us? They they showed uh, they were upset that we, that we were. Oh, that we were using this drop? We, no, that we were just tossing shade in general on tuba players. I don't really have a problem with a tuba player. I think no. they're spectacular. They just. It's look. just imagine running with that around you. You're going to be slow. You're not playing that song and lighting the field on fire. Uh, get over it. It's a fair point, Jason. But you aren't a featured <laughs> instrument. I'm sorry, tuba players. <laughs> and now the solo. <laughs> No. Tuba, take it. <laughs> Stay in your lane, tuba player. Stay in your lane. I love that we got back to <laughs> yeah, insulting we did, tuba we did players. We get back to blasting tuba players and Joik Bell at the same time. All right. <laughs> Thursdays this year, we've got a brand new segment. We're going to be picking a player that we think is going to take it to 100 this week, which is going to be basically a player that either had a down week the week prior, which obviously we're starting the year, or somebody ranked generally outside the consensus group of fantasy starters on the week. So let's do that right now. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. 100 is where that intro to the show was, just for the record. 
Like that was probably a one ten. That I mean, was it was, was pretty good. That was sensational. We all said the same thing at the same time. And we didn't even have to practice. No. It just happened. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. All right. Who do you guys have taking it to one hundred this week? Obviously we did not have a um a set of games last week, so we're not looking at players that had a down week for week one, but somebody that maybe you're either questioning starting or is just outside the group of considered starters for the week? Well, I'll, I'll go first because we were just talking about him. You traded up for him. I am making my player, taking it up to 100, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And the reason <laughs> why is because if I don't take it up to 100 right now... Is that Mike's hair today? I was oh, gonna, does he I have do. the Jonathan no. Taylor Look, Thomas hair today? I have, I've taken my hair up because I finally got a, a haircut, but I was... As soon as he said it, I was like, oh, I kind of got the JTT hair. You kind of have the JTT. Got the throwback. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. The Stamos. Um... <laughs> You yeah. were, you were taking it to about three before the hair. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's that's being nice. The neck hair was up to one hundred, but <laughs> yeah. So Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Taylor, uh, r- rookie running back for the Indianapolis Colts, lovingly referred to as JTT over here, um, is a phenomenal talent, and he is the backup. So if I have Marlon Mack and I've got Jonathan Taylor, and I'm looking at my lineup, who do I start this week? I would start Marlon Mack every single time. But what I believe will happen this weekend against a terrible Jacksonville Jaguars team is when that offensive line meets no defense and Jonathan Taylor meets a few handoffs, you're going to see a player take it to 100 in the sense that he is phenomenal. He's a big play guy. He's going to, once he gets out in the open, he's sub 4-4 four, four at his size. You're not tackling him. You're not catching him. And I, I think am- he's terrified to play him in week one even though the matchup's great I'm I'm really worried about it I have that decision on my team David Montgomery he's practicing he looks like he's gonna start Oof. he's the Oof. number one on the depth chart and I'm staring down David Montgomery coming off the injury Tariq Cohen yesterday saying he's good or Jonathan Taylor Ooh. I'm staring down Kareem Hunt against a, a tough matchup Baltimore sharing a backfield just like Jonathan Taylor or Jonathan Taylor. I get the difficulty. I don't think that's an easy question, but I can. I was hoping I, it was easy. I, can I thought someone would tell me what to do. Well, no, I can confidently say that I would start, if I had your roster, I would start Jonathan Taylor. You're not afraid of five carries in week one. I think if he has five carries, he could end up with a good game. But I don't believe five carries happens because I expect this game to be a more one-sided affair. And okay. if you're up okay. and you're running the ball, you know, running the clock out, Marlon Mack's going to get his, but so is Jonathan Taylor. All right. I'm going to go with a name we haven't talked about a lot lately, but might have a nice week one. Boston Scott mm-hmm. of the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, uh, yesterday, Doug Peterson talking about Miles Sanders returning from the injury. He could have his reps limited for the first handful of weeks, compared it to last year when he was coming off of an injury. And that depth chart, it's Boston Scott. It's Corey Clement. And Boston Scott had a very effective end to last year. You could see more of the same in week one. He went very, very late in our draft last night, but it's a a situation of week one, Boston Scott's got a shot to produce, and it's Washington. The matchup's Washington. So that's my pick for this week, Mike. Yeah, I I like that pick. I just want to point out that the last month of the season – while Miles Sanders was the running back seven, Boston. So this is not like Miles Sanders has to be out and injured. While Miles Sanders was good, Boston Scott was the running back nine. This was a lot to do with the fact that they had injuries at their wide receiver position. And lo and behold, this week, I, I love this pick, Andy. I didn't know until I sat down in this chair that you were going Boston Scott. I think it's a great option. And I'm just like, the the chips were already in the middle of the table. I've already pushed them in, but now I am People need to hear this from you. But I'm just I'm pushing them in even farther. Antonio Gibson, Washington's rookie running back. Week There's, one. You both picked a rookie. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm going with him. I am starting him this week. There has been uh I mean the hype was we we were soaring through the atmosphere. There was at least perceptively a little bit of doubt cast of you know, J.D. McKissick came out on top of the the depth chart. The word committee has been used by Ron Rivera, but uh, Ron Rivera then talking about J.D. McKissick, uh, they said uh, we just happened to put him on the chart first. Like that's that's not the that's not the old butt tap of saying this guy is this is the starting running back. He is absolutely our guy. 
Uh, Dwayne Haskins was commenting about, can they keep Gibson under wraps in week one? He's like, ah, that's not going to happen. Antonio Gibson is the most talented player on this team committee. Sure. That, that could happen. There's other guys will get on the field, but I think Gibson shows out week one that he is the best player in the backfield. All right, Boston Scott, Jonathan Taylor, and Antonio Gibson. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available online at walmart.com and at Walmart stores. Pick yours up today. News and notes from around the league. Just what everybody wanted to think about. Mike Evans missed practice Wednesday with a hamstring injury. Status for Sunday Goodness, against man. New Orleans is now going to be, could come down to be, a game-time decision. <laughs> we're, we're seriously, we're doing this? Mike Week Evans uh, does not believe the injury is serious. He thinks he'll be good to go. The game is the later game. Oh, no. that's Some people might say, oh, that's good news. More time. A couple <laughs> hours is not going to heal your hamstring. Who says that? Well, <laughs> well they just no, strap but you, that the, like a barometric pressure you, device I, on I, it. I see that written about so often, whether it's a Monday night or a late game, in the sense that it's like, oh, you've got a little bit extra time. Monday night, I'd get that for but, sure. But the issue here is, you want to know Sunday morning. You know, if your waivers are running once a day on Sunday, you need to have a game plan for if he misses. Yeah, and it's another one of those reminders. The Evans situation is why if you have a Thursday wide receiver, put them in your wide receiver spot, not your flex spot, mm -hmm. so that way you can flex Evans out on Sunday for an, a running back if you need to. <clears throat> Amari Cooper practicing in full. It's great news. Mm -hmm. We weren't sure. Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager, both returned to practice on Wednesday. Um, I would mentioned managing the workload, but the news on Rager is really good that he was basically doing everything at practice. We don't know whether he'll be active week one. I would I'm, think, I'm leaning no. Yeah, I lean that he will be out. Uh, the, the bigger news blurb is the Miles Sanders. Uh, is he actually – do they manage the workload? You know, the, all all offseason, it was everyone from their coaching staff coming out saying, we will not manage him. Now, of course, they had – he had he's dealing with the injury. But the quote he's is – like, I'll manage myself. Watch this. <laughs> but the quote from Peterson is – it's a possibility. So if you drafted Miles Sanders in the early second round. I mean, You're starting him. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting Miles Sanders. I don't see a world where you are benching him. David Montgomery was limited in Wednesday's practice. Tariq Cohen commented on the fact that Montgomery has bounced back from the groin injury. It's like it never happened. A total fabrication. Never happened. Never happened. Uh, confidence level of Not being able time. to put... <laughs> It was a lie. <laughs> Montgomery out there against Detroit. I mean, on on paper, this seems like it could be, you know, a volume play for Montgomery. They don't have anybody in in that depth chart outside of a couple of gadget players in Cohen and in Patterson. So I would have a really hard time starting David Montgomery. Starting someone that a couple weeks ago was carted to the locker room after he hobbled off the field. If he goes back out there and goes full force, full game mode and tears it on that first drive, you've really hurt your team. And I don't know that he has the upside to say, well, I've got to take that shot. So let's, uh, let's yeah, put this Yeah, but what about in... Kareem Hunt or David Montgomery? I, Kareem uh, Hunt plays Baltimore. I would that, play Kareem. That's a situation that you probably have. I would yeah. play Kareem Hunt. I, I think I would as well, especially if it's any kind of PPR. If it's, if it's well, either, either way, I think I would play Kareem Hunt. Let's go a little bit further down the rung, though, Jason. Let, let me throw out some names. J.K. Dobbins. I'd play no, Montgomery, hands I would, down. I would play Montgomery over J.K. Dobbins there. And how about James Robinson out of Jacksonville, Ooh. who has, it, and this is a news blurb coming up, uh, Divine Ozigbo, the other potential starting running back for Jacksonville, uh, was put on IR because they brought on Dari Ogumbawale, the formerly of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So James Robinson and Chris Thompson, are th th those are the guys. For Jacksonville, I the, would absolutely start Chris Thompson. Great point. Yes. <laughs> well, that's Give, not what I'm asking about. I'd take the shot on Robinson in week one in right. that situation. Uh, but Montgomery, the, regardless of whether he plays Adjusting this week. lineup? The Bears did not, they did not add to the depth chart at running back. That should be a good sign for Montgomery's recovery regardless. Uh, Mike, you mentioned Divina Zigbo onto mm -hmm. IR. James Robinson is a sneaky start this week. 
And they also didn't add Devontae Freeman, who visited with them. So Freeman is looking to visit as many places as possible, but not stay. Yeah, he's been racking up air miles for a long time, and so he's just got to get them out now. Yeah. Uh, Brashad Perryman, Denzel Mims practicing in full for week one. Both are going to make their uh, debut as New York Jets. We do have an update that Mike Evans is not practicing today. All right. So I was listening to Bruce Arians <laughs> last night, and what his words were on that situation was that if he practices today, he said tomorrow then, um, that he would obviously play. Otherwise, it would have to be a game-time decision. So you're not going to know until game time, and I – you strongly recommend having a backup plan. I would guess right now that he does not play. Yeah. Well, maybe you drafted Deshaun Jackson and you have a backup plan already. Uh, Kenyon Drake, not listed on the injury report, ready to go for week one. Cooper Cup working on a contract extension with All the right. Rams. That's important news because we weren't, we weren't sure if he was, they were considering moving on from him with Van Jefferson. Uh, and then Sean McVay just talking about the backfield committing to that three back committee which I, I 100% think it will be. I think you're going to see a little, uh, probably more Malcolm Brown than anybody. And then Cam Akers worked in. And if he's good, maybe earning a bigger role. And I don't know if Daryl Henderson's going to make it in there. I don't think, I'm, yeah, you're not counting on him week one. Any other big time news? Brooks, you got anything significant before we get into our matchup breaks now? No, sir. All right. We want to thank today's sponsor. We're talking about Theragun. Oh, yes, yes. sir. The stress, gentlemen, of daily life weighs on all of us. Yeah, like Mike Evans' game time decision. And his actual... Goodness. And he, he may need a Theragun as well. Uh, whether you're an elite athlete like... Like Mike Evans. Mike, Mike <laughs> Evans. Or a regular person like Jason. Mm, uh, yes, trying I do. To get, Take that, Jason. Just trying regular. to get through the day. Muscle pain, muscle tension. That's a real thing. That's why all three of us, we've been big fans of Theragun for a long time. If you don't know what it is, it's a handheld percussive therapy device it releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth speed and power mm. and now it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush because i'm gonna be honest with you i had like theragun th right three uh theraguns ago the og yeah it was loud it was it was great but it was loud mm-hmm uh, I could, always improving. Yeah, always improving. So uh, we love it when we're, we're, we're playing uh, some pickleball or we're getting out there playing some sports. It is essential. So try uh, Theragun risk-free for 30 days. There is no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with the OLED screen, personalized Theragun app, plus the quiet and power you need. It starts at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash footballers right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's T H E R A G U N dot com slash footballers, Theragun dot com slash footballers. Foot Clan, we want to send a big thank you to Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's show. Pristine Auction, the absolute best sports memorabilia site in uh, the history of the universe, is what my sources are telling me. And yes. my sources are myself because I am on Pristine Auction on the reg, always checking out the gear that they have. Uh, my office is decked out. Our studio here is decked out, and we always go to Pristine Auction because we're getting fantastic prizes on authentic signatures, getting incredible memorabilia at great prices. Like this DJ Moore signed jersey, Andy, $55. $55! Look, it's signed jersey. DJ Moore signed this thing, yeah, and it's only 55 bucks. And they, they're getting the new guys in. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, we got a signed NFL football, just 88 bucks. A Chris Godwin signed jersey, just $85. It's ridiculous. The, the deals you can get over there, and they have all types of different things. Jerseys, cleats, gloves. I've seen pylons on there. And it's not just sports figures. I mean, movies, any any pop culture thing you could think it's of awesome. that, that you're into. Go check it out. You get some really cool stuff. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-Auction.com. And when you sign up for your free account, use the code BALLERS, and you're going to get a $10 credit off your first purchase. Fantasy forecast. Ba, 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 boom. Oh, we get to talk about football. Thursday night football update for you. We talked about the Texans Chiefs game yesterday. So if you want to hear that breakdown, you can go to yesterday's episode of the show. Also, an update for everyone. I'm going to be eating so much pizza tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's pizza night. <laughs> hey. Are we going to be down here? I don't. Uh, no, I'm planning to. 
be at home with the family I know, who's the playing kids, yeah. fantasy for the first yeah. year. And and they, I mean, before I left the house, they were like pulling up their teams. Do I have anybody? And I've got bad news. My son is starting his fantasy football career with Pat Mahomes against him on the first night of oh. football. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that might be rough. That, that's thrown into the deep end. <laughs> that might be you learn the pain of the Thursday. Brandon Cooks for tonight's game is a true game day decision. He is out. a full on do not start out. no I, matter what. No, get out. Hundred percent agree. Um, <laughs> the source said so far so good. There's optimism I, he'll play. Great. First time no, with Deshaun you. Watson. First game of the year with an injury. Sit him on your bench. If he has a great game on your bench, be happy. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. You got a good player, but the odds of that happening are ten percent, and the odds of the opposite happening are ninety percent. All right, the New York Jets head to Buffalo to take on the Bills. These two teams have the same record right now; they're competing for this division. Uh, <laughs> the Bills this, are this six, is a tuba matchup. If it's I've a ever six seen and one. a half point, uh, their Bills are six and a half point favorites. It's a thirty nine and a half point over under. What would that put the implied team total at for the New York Jets, Andy? Sixteen and a half points. <laughs> what? This is a matchup where you really have to think about: Do you start any Jets in Week One? Yeah. Like if you have an option to pivot away from, you know, Lev Bell or even Jamison Crowder in Week One in Buffalo with that implied point total. It's just not a great situation. On the teams where I drafted Chris Herndon, which I can think of two, I have double tight ends on those teams. Uh, picked up Jack Doyle, picked up Eric Ebron to start right. them over Herndon this week. It, the Bills have a great defense, and the Jets have an offense led by Adam Gase. And Sam Darnold, who has stunk. I mean, this has been in, in all the reports and practice. We need to... I want to find the path for them to take the step forward. Maybe Chris Herndon is part of that path. Maybe it's uh, Perryman and, and Mims. But week one against the Bills, that's just a very, very difficult situation. Um, Lev Bell, we mentioned him on yesterday's buy or sell. You know, he's a volume RB2 this week. Okay, Jason. Yeah. You're going to take it to 100 with, with uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, or are you going to play Le'Veon Bell? Ooh, that's a I'd question be, I be, don't like you I'd asking. I'd be Bell for sure for I, me. Yeah, I, I, I still think I'm going to go with the volume. Even though we said, you know, that 10-point that line is going to be basically where Love Bell's at, and I think the upside is higher with Jonathan Taylor. Uh, the floor is secure with Lev Bell. He's get, he's going to get guaranteed more touches than Jonathan Taylor. He's also going to be involved in the receiving game. So in any kind of PPR format, I think his – you know, his floor is never terrible. His ceiling just is is non-existent. What about on the other side of the ball, the, the team that's picked to win, and they look, it's hard to not see a very positive game script for the running backs over on Buffalo. The perceived starter, Devin Singletary, would you start him or Levy on Bell? I would start Devin Singletary. I, th I think Oof, Singletary's right. going to have a good game. All right. Yeah, I, I would go Bell there as well. Uh, you're right, though. The the matchup is in favor of, of the Bills. Singletary, Moss making his debut. Uh, there's a couple starts of the week in here. Mike loves Josh Allen this week, and that's not a surprise. I do as well. He, he's been one of those players that this week one matchup was yes. a difference maker in uh, picking from the later round quarterbacks. When Josh Allen was on the board, it's like, okay, I get to take Josh Allen, start him at home against the Jets in week one. So um, he's a smash play this week. Stephon Diggs making his debut, I think is going to be a bright, bright, bright day for Stephon Diggs. Yeah, as, as much shade as I've thrown on Diggs in this in the draft season, because I, you know I'm I'm still concerned season long, but week one this is. So you guys like is, the Josh Allen Stephon Diggs stack? Week yeah, one. yeah, I'm that in you on that. have in League of Records. Yes, yeah, like, oh, oh <laughs> I forgot. Yes, I do Thank declare. You. What, what this old thing? Very nice, very nice. Also, I, I do want to say this because we, we're throwing a lot of shade on the Jets and, and rightfully so here from, from a fantasy perspective, but I would throw Jamison Crowder out in a PPR league. You'd still do it? I, okay. I still would. I, I don't expect, you know, I think he's going to have like eight receptions. Yeah. It might be for 50 yards, but even still, if if you've got that eight-point baseline, um, I, I think he is a safe, low-ceiling guy. Okay. Anything else from this matchup you want to discuss? Nope. All right. The Chicago Bears. Doo -doo -doo -doo. They go to Detroit. 
And uh, the Lions are three-point home favorites. It's a 43.5 point over under. Uh, we did not get to see this matchup. I was looking this up this morning. We did not get to see this matchup with Matthew Stafford at all last year, even though they played twice. Both games came after Stafford uh, left for the season, which meant the Bears got to face Jeff Driscoll and David Blau in those two matchups. Uh, the regression happened on the Bears' defensive side of the ball last year, but they're still a very stout defense. Stafford, uh, I think, is going to have a tremendous year. Do you like him? Do you like starting him in Week One? I I do. I I actually I'm I'm not afraid of the Chicago Bears as a defense anymore. I, I, that's not to say that they're not a good defense, but really, when I look at fantasy, I don't care about the top half defenses. I care about the elite. I you know I don't want to start against a, a team that truly is shutting players down. The the Jacksonville Jaguars of old. Um, the Chicago Bears, to me, are not a plus matchup, but they're not going to sway me from taking a player that I think is going to have a good season with a good offense, uh, good receiving options, and and bench him. All right, Mitch Trubisky on the other side. Is he starting? Yeah, he's starting. Is he? I don't know. Of course he is, Mike. Wink. <laughs> Man, do you know that feeling though? Uh, you, wanna, you 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 know why he's doing that, Mike? Did you not realize it? The high you get when you spring Mitch Trubisky on the opposing team. Yes, it feels really irre good, irreplaceable. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> Maybe the reason he has decided to go with Trubisky to start the season is because of this matchup, where Trubisky has thrived uh, the last three games against the Lions. Three touchdowns in each game. He has been really good against the Lions. The Lions certainly aren't a defense that scares me. Uh, if he is mobile and active, and and, and let's let's yeah, actually, I mean, the Lions last year, twenty fifth in the league in terms of fantasy points given up to the quarterback position, twenty eighth against running back, thirty first against wide receivers. That's a smash play for most opposing teams. Absolutely, I, I think this is a good game for fantasy options in in general. But let's actually talk about the fact that even though I've thrown shade on Trubisky his entire career, and I don't believe he could ever be a franchise quarterback. He has been good in fantasy plenty of times, and he did win the job. Nick Foles did not come in, and, and I, you know you can make any narrative street the reason why, but in the end, he did enough to secure this job and has been fantasy relevant and has been good against the Lions. I, you know, If you're in a multi-quarterback uh, league, yeah, you I, could I think do Trubisky worse. is Trubisky a fine— Trubisky threw three touchdowns in both Detroit games last year. Oh, I got him back, Mike. I got him did, back. Did, I, did you mention that? I did. Yeah. Yes. 334 <laughs> uh, yards. So, yeah. Uh, Tariq Cohen. Some people wondering if you can stream Tariq Cohen this week with the Montgomery injury. I'm not excited to do it personally. We have him at RB31 on the week. Do either of you guys have confidence in that play or is that a desperation play for you? I, I, it's somewhere in between. I, I'm not confident to do it, but I'm also – I don't think it's a desperation play at all to play – Cohen this week especially with it, it, if Montgomery plays maybe he does I still think it would be foolish of the Chicago Bears to go here's 25 tw yeah, 25 opportunities here for for David Montgomery so Cohen will get some play and they're susceptible to receptions to the running back at least they were last year on the other side is there a Detroit running back you would take a shot no. on in week one no no by the way last year Tariq Cohen over the course of the whole season he had four games inside the top 24. Yeah. So, it wasn't as good last year. Feel It seems like he's lost something. We'll, we'll see. Um, you would not start a Detroit running back. Allen Robinson, you're playing him. Kenny Galladay, he did pop up on an injury report, Brooks. Did you see that? He popped up with a For, little... For, like, smoothness? Uh, no, no. He had a bumpy Too hamstring. Smooth. Not oh. smooth. Oh, bumpy hamstring. Oh, oh no. The opposite of smooth. Someone needs a Theragun. Uh... <laughs> So, but you're playing Galladay. It didn't seem like yes. it was going to threaten this week. It just, you know, Mike Evans has set a, a paranoia precedent yep. for these big-time wide receivers in week one. Uh, Marvin Jones or Anthony Miller, who would you rather start in this matchup? We talked about how soft the Lions defense was last year, so the matchup is, is more on the Miller side. But I, would you go Jones? I still lean Jones. I, I, would, I would go Marvin Jones here because you know big plays can happen. And I think this game could be a surprising uh, offensive shootout. shootout. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, one of the things that we've talked about heading into the season is what to expect from like no preseason, 
Uh, no, you know, you don't have the reps on the field. What are you going to get out of these matchups? No fans. Um, I know uh, J.J. Zacharyson, he posted the last time we were in a situation like this, which was the 2011 lockout with a limited preseason situation. It was the offenses that had success in week one. The yep. overs were smashed. 12 of them uh, hit the over. The defenses struggled. So uh, I'm leaning that direction, and I think Vegas is too, with some of these over-unders being a little higher than I expected. Green Bay travels to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. The Vikings are two-and-a-half-point home favorites in this one. It's a 46-point over-under. And so, you know, Aaron Rodgers, I think he came out yesterday and said we're being underrated again. Under under the radar, Aaron Rodgers. Maybe. But... uh uh, you know, last year you didn't see a lot of blow up games from Aaron Rodgers, and in this one, their dogs. What is, what are the big storylines in this matchup for you? Uh, the the Green Bay running situation is you know what how is AJ Dillon used? You know, new reports have come out talking about Jamal uh, Williams. I think Aaron Rodgers was talking him up, saying he's looking great, and then of course the main guy in the backfield there Aaron Jones the utilization and the split of these three running backs is pretty much all that my eyes are going to be on I I there I want to know how Aaron Rodgers does I want to see if if MVS can challenge Alan Lazard for the number two but in, in the end of the at the end of the day when when this game is over all I care about is what was the split and how are they used in certain game script times of the game when it comes to Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and A.J. Dillon. That is my great curiosity. One thing that uh, may guide you in 2020 with the Vikings and, and your opportunities to stream Kirk Cousins or even the way you think about the other wide receivers, you know, Adam Thielen is going to be in your lineup every week. Mm -hmm. In 2019, when leading, they took over 30 seconds per play, which was 22nd in the NFL. They slowed it down when they were ahead. When they were behind, they were the sixth fastest team in football. They are favored in this one. The recipe has been Dalvin Cook, and then, you know, it's Dalvin Clock. I mean, they just waste <laughs> the time out. I mean, just oh, he's, no. he's going to burn it. Oh. So... Cook, you're playing. Uh, you're probably staying away from Cousins. He's not ranked high this week. Um, good defense in Green Bay. But do you, is there anybody you're taking a chance with in Minnesota? Anyone else? No, it's just the the regular Irv starters. Irv Smith breakout. I've got my eye on Irv Smith to, to see how he, how is he actually used. You know, like Who's going to establish themselves as the second pass catching option, That not counting Dalvin Cook. So th that's the interesting thing to watch from, from this game. Uh, and not that you aren't playing Aaron Jones, but I think Aaron Jones is a is in very good situation here. You have uh, Everson Griffin is gone. Daniil Hunter uh, is on the IR. Like Minnesota is, uh, I'm I'm very concerned about Minnesota's defense. I was sad when they got Yannick Ngakwe because he's really good, and I was looking forward to Minnesota having what uh, everybody thought was a good defense that. I saw as a really bad defense. Right. Um, so now I'm like, are they going to be that bad? I'd be smashing the under in this game. 46 and a half points. Yeah. I, think, th I think this is going to be a slower mm -hmm. game. I think this is going to be a game that is, uh, you know, in that 40 point range. Uh, Devontae Adams. Okay. You're playing him. It's And Mike, yep. your question, or Jason, you bringing up Aaron Jones. That's more of, uh, you're curious to see what happens, but Aaron Jones is in your lineup. 100% in my lineup. Yes. All right, and then if you had to pick another Green Bay wide receiver to start this week? It would be the Lazard King. Yeah. Oh, we're back. This matchup, the Miami Dolphins, the New England Patriots. Back in New England, the way that the season ended for New England, the way that they lost their bye, the way that we watched Ryan Fitzpatrick set them on fire. Patriots are six-and-a-half-point home favorites. It's a 42-point over-under. It's the debut of Cam Newton. I I don't know that I'm stoked about the fantasy options in this game. No, I'm I'm not either. Julian Edelman uh propped up on the on the injury report. The I mean, it, it's one of those things where there's a lot of curiosity, right? Cam Newton, the new offense, mm -hmm. who's gonna be the number one target? I'm excited to see how is the split going to be with with Sony Michelle uh, considering all the other running backs are a little bit injured. I'm excited to see. I just don't want to see with them in my lineup. Um, I don't really look forward to starting any player on either side of the ball. I believe in Devontae Parker. He torched 
the the Patriots the last time. He torched Gilmore. Great, but I'm gonna bet on that not happening again. Like there's really I'm hard pressed. Maybe the- Parker or Edelman. <sighs> I would take Parker. I'd go Parker. But that's it's tough. Yeah, I that's guess a tough situation. I guess I'd go Parker. I don't want to. I genuinely don't want to start either of them. I think that the best start for who they are and and what you need in your fantasy lineup and where you got him might be Mike Gesicki, uh, because I think he's going to be more of like a PPR uh, option at tight end where there's just not many of those. I don't know if Mike Gesicki's getting started very much this week by anybody. I don't mean it in re- relative to the Patriots. I just mean he didn't get drafted last night. In our draft, I think with all the breakout candidates at tight ends, I'm seeing him sneak through more drafts, and people are going to be watching to see what week one looks like, which is what I'm going to be doing with Preston Williams, by the way. I would never play him this week, but he's one of those players where I want to I want to see the film. I want to see, does he look healthy? And, you know, are the targets coming his way again? Because when we started last year, it was Parker, and it was Preston, and they didn't target anybody else. You right. bring up a good point, and I'm switching to Julian Edelman versus the Devontae Parker. Because the last time we saw Parker have a great game, Preston Williams wasn't there. All the targets had to be forced his way. Preston Williams being out there, uh, look, if if I'm a quarterback playing against the Patriots, I'm going to go to my number two read real quick. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Jordan Howard or Matt Breida? I, man. I'll stick with Jordan Howard. I will too. I would play Breida. Really? Okay. Philadelphia, the Eagles take on the Washington football team. This game is in Washington, yet the Eagles are five and a half point favorites, which is significant. A 43 point over under that puts Washington at 18.8 points. The Eagles at 24 points. Um, divisional matchup, the debut of Antonio Gibson. Mike mentioned him at the top that he would play him. He is the singular most compared player in our start sit tool on the website because of where you drafted him mm-hmm. which means you are you are making the Lev bell antonio gibson decision you're, well where you're you making... drafted him is all over the place i mean <laughs> yeah. it, did you draft when, third, did, when did you draft <laughs> third round or 13th round <laughs> yes it could have been either if we went two more weeks of drafting he would have been the number one overall pick. so i i love gibson i'm on record of saying i i think the talent is there the pathway everything is great i didn't want to disparage you're taking it to 100 pick but i would not start antonio gibson week one i the philadelphia eagles have been you know kind of two years in a row and no personnel changes that make me believe they're not going to be great against the run a very low over under an expected point total for the washington football team is just not the you know, it's like I'm going Jonathan Taylor, who might get fewer carries or fewer touches than than Antonio Gibson, but he's going against a hapless Jacksonville Jaguars defense that has no options. I think the what Philadelphia do you think it Eagles, feels like to be called hapless? That seems pretty painful. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't mean offense to the players there, more the general manager, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you take know, that, take GM. that. Gibson is going to need a big play. That's what I believe in this game. I don't think you're gonna have, you're not gonna have a volume play in Gibson. He's gonna need to make a big play. Oh, it's it's through the air. That that that's the upside of Antonio Gibson. Okay, great. Your 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 D line is is good against the run. Well, can your linebackers match up with Antonio Gibson? That's, that's fair. Your, that's the big question. In two games against Philadelphia last year, Terry McLaurin had five for one twenty five mm. and one. Terry, and then five for one thirty mm. and one. Terry, and uh, so. You know, Terry's in your lineup. Yes. On the other side of the ball, because that's where the list ends for potential starts on on the Washington side. It's McLaurin and maybe Gibson. Carson Wentz, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Zach Ertz. Uh, You starting all of them? Uh, Yeah, you're starting Deshaun Jackson. I mean... If, well, I guess you, that's not a, like a locked in thing, but it's it. If you drafted him, you probably are starting him. Zach Ertz is the one I'm the most confident in in this matchup. Look, we part of Washington. You know, we don't always highlight defensive players on the show, but Chase Young. Like, I'm pretty excited to see what this guy can do. If if he's anything like he was in college, this guy is going to wreak havoc in the NFL against an offensive line. That uh, Philadelphia's offensive line, they've lost two starters. Jason Peters is moving over to the left tackle position, but they're 
you know, they're shuffling things up here. If I had a bust pick this week, it would be Miles Sanders. Against it's, this, it, with that offensive line you. beat up, with the limited workload, and with the defensive line that Washington has now, I would, I'm a little concerned. I'm concerned as well, but... So that, I, I I am playing him. Like I yeah. have Miles Sanders, and I, not that my options are tremendous to put in over Miles Sanders. You know, I would be you'd be digging down and like Chris Thompson. Do you take Chris Thompson off the bench? It is like it's alluring. A uh, negative game script for Chris Thompson. It seeming like it's just James Robinson and Chris Thompson. But in that decision, I'm still gonna go with Miles Sanders. I would I think too. you have it's, to. It's one of those like you drafted him. You're a little worried. And I get that, but it's not going to change what you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, Mike, we're going to talk about him a little bit later. Yes. Deshaun Jackson or Will Fuller this week? Because you got to oh, decide a, right now, Will Fuller tonight. That's a great question. Uh, man, I th where would you go, Jay? I, I, don't I think know you have to fly in formation here with Brandon go. Cooks. Get Will Fuller, the flying V. Yeah, in there. the flying V. Uh, Will Fuller would be the guy I would start. And and in addition to that, we need like a duck noise. <laughs> yeah, for, for Will Fuller. Quack quack. Will Fuller. Quack quack quack. Um, Mister Ducksworth. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would start him. Plus, you get the advantage of there is something to be said about having Thursday night players. You get to see if he stinks or if he has a great game to to make that decision on your Sunday lineup of saying I just need a safe floor or I need a higher upside you're going to find that out plus the extra incentive of it's week one it's the first football in forever I want a player in the game if I had those two guys there's no way Deshaun Jackson is going in over Deshaun Will Jackson two touchdowns last year in week one against Washington oh he could last do it again. man standing but so could Fuller yeah it's it's a tough call I think that Jackson is actually a little bit safer, which sounds ridiculous. Could be. Well, remember, the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs did shut down the wide receiver position at the end of last year. If you don't remember that, it, you think, oh, they're going to score a lot of points. It's going to be good for wide receivers. It was not the case at the end of last season, and they are returning pretty much you know, all of their team. Okay. All right. I think we're, we're good with this matchup. Uh, Greg Ward, sneaky start at the wide receiver position in a you know one of those Maybe. five wide receiver leagues. Yeah, in a five wide. All right. Assuming Rager and, and Alshon don't play, yeah, he. I he actually is. thought about making him my taking it to one hundred because I'm you know you That's look the, for yeah. that outlier way outside the realm of sure, but I I wouldn't play him. Uh, not that courageous. Las Vegas, the Raiders taking on the Carolina Panthers in Carolina. The Raiders are three and a half point favorites. It's a forty seven and a half point over under. Uh, fun fact, the Panthers actually hit the over in 11 of their 16 games last year, despite the struggles on offense. Thank you, Christian McCaffrey. Um, they, you know, they're the, one of the teams that are exciting to kind of see what they have in week one, Teddy Bridgewater, new starting quarterback, uh, Robbie Anderson, making his debut for the team, new offense, Matt rule. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, and I like I like the Raiders this year. I think that they're going to be one of the they're one of the dark horse teams for me. You know, I'm sympathetic for to yes. Derek Carr. Yes, you are, and Josh Jacobs. And uh, Josh Jacobs, look, if you have to take a a pick, you know, you you can't go the big three. Who's going to finish as the number one running back on the week? It is Josh freaking Jacobs. This the the defense for Carolina. Uh, they are going to have some growing pains. They lost a lot of key players, and Josh Jacobs might run for 150 yards on opening weekend. I think that is insultingly low <laughs> for a might high end. I mean, I, th this is if, – if you have a team that is loaded and stacked and you're like, I'm not sure if I should start Josh Jacobs, you're insane because he is – I mean, when I talk about the, the hapless Jacksonville Jaguars defense, that's that's what you have here in Carolina as well. They're starting their their average age at defense is like twelve years old. They they are all rookies. They drafted their entire draft this year was one hundred percent on the defensive side of the ball. They're taking the approach of uh, let's let's get young guys reps. Let's right. build for, you know this team the right way for the future. And I am targeting running backs against Carolina, it really Until all proven otherwise. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yesterday I talked about Randall Cobb being one of those sneaky players that could end up 
a waiver wire darling because of a great week one. Mm -hmm. Curtis Samuel's on that list for me as well. Okay. Uh, Curtis Samuel in this offense, a lot of camp hype, not that we didn't have it last year, but, um, you know, the weapons that Bridgewater has, they're interesting. DJ Moore, Mike, you took him in the first round of our, mind you, keeper league draft, but you secured DJ Moore yesterday in the draft. PPR machine. Yeah. He's a start no matter what. On the other side of the ball, we talked about Jacobs. What about Ruggs and Brian Edwards? If you had to decide between, because the matchup's good. I mean, yeah. last year, 30 points given up against the wide receiver position per game. Carolina, you talked about the defensive struggles. One of these rookies is going to have a great debut this week. Who is it? Tell me. It really could be either, it, but I if I had both, I'm going with both. Sure. I, I, totally, I totally see that as a possibility. I would take Brian Edwards if I had to take one because I think more targets, more receptions will go his way from how I'm projecting the roles for these guys. Obviously, the higher value targets, you know, I I don't think Brian Edwards is going to have a 75-yard touchdown, whereas Henry Ruggs has that speed that could do it, um, you know, three or four times a year. Almost took Henry Ruggs instead of Nikhil Harry at the end of the draft last night, to, and I had Brian Edwards already, just to kind of hedge, and then I realized I would potentially just be holding two Raiders wide receivers for a long period of time. So I, I took the shot on Harry, but both of these guys could have great debuts. Derek Carr could have a sneaky, nice start to the year. Derek, Jason, Derek Carr yeah, or, yeah. or Mitch Trubisky in your, oh, uh, that's as easy. your QB2. Ooh, that is fun. I would go Mitch Trubisky. Oh, uh, my the, gosh. The rushing baseline of Mitch and the fact that I think that the Lions I will be. I think you're getting challenged to a bet. <laughs> Let's do a Mitch Trubisky, Derek Carr bet to start the year, Jason. <laughs> I'm in. Let's do it. Water bet. Uh, I love having something depend on Derek Carr, and you love having something depend ooh, on Mitch Trubisky. One of those things might be true. The other is a oh my gosh horrific lie. I do not like depending on Trubisky, but I think the Lions can keep up with the Bears and force Trubisky to keep throwing the ball. The way that I see that the, the oh, Raiders this game is gonna going to happen too. Okay. I mean, I think Teddy B and company can keep up against I, the Raiders. That I, defense was not outstanding last year. I do like the – I certainly like the Panthers' offense a, a lot more than their defense. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. Colts, they're taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are eight-point road favorites in this game. Mm. Mm. Oh, my. Mm. Oh, my. A 45-point over-under – which puts uh, Jacksonville at 18.5 implied points. This is uh, – get used to seeing this, I think. Uh, against Jacksonville? Against Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, this came – man, imagine starting the year at home against the division rival and being eight-point underdogs. But here we are for Jacksonville. I love the Colts, uh, what they've done this offseason. They've, they've really strengthened that interior on the defensive line. It's going to make it very difficult for the surprise breakout of James Robinson this week, especially if he's sharing the work with Chris Thompson. As exciting as Thompson is, at least he's got the PPR side of it. Robinson is a stash. He is not a play this week. Do you agree? agree? No, I I completely agree. If you have to play one of those two, it's Chris Thompson over James Robinson. Uh, you, You expect them to be down and having to throw the ball. Chris Thompson is a perfect... PPR back. I'm I'm fine starting Chris Thompson this week. James Robinson is not someone that I want to just have that glory. All you're doing is a shot at a glory play. I don't think I'd play either. Now that I'm thinking about, it. I don't think I'd even play Chris Thompson this week. I, I this Colts defense adding DeForest Buckner already eighth against the run last year. I am not. I love the Colts. The Colts are my favorite defense this year. I just said that a, a couple days ago. Your favorite was, defense? Yes. Really? I was very sad. I, I have had them in every every league where I draft a defense. It's been the Colts this year. Really? And I was very sad last night that someone took them ahead of me. Who did that? I, oh, was it you? You. I didn't even remember. <laughs> it was so late and we were drafting defenses. I didn't even care. I just saw the that's Colts why we go need, off. That's why we need a, uh, a boom shakalaka right yes. there. Yeah, you that dunked moment, on me. <laughs> Mike dunked on Jason. DJ Chark, wide receiver 19 on the week. Confident in Chark in week one, Mike? Yeah, I'm still playing him. Gardner? Less confident. Yeah, you, you aren't streaming him despite him uh, tearing up the Colts in week 17 last year, almost 300 yards and three touchdowns. Another prediction for you, Tyler Eifert has a better than average game in week one and gets people thinking about him on the waiver wire. Okay. 
Philip Rivers on the other side. I think you can absolutely play Philip Rivers in week one. But what about this note here that from our editor in chief, Kyle the Borgogan? He is a steady stream for week one. Are you? Is it a steady P stream, Jay? Uh, you can stream the river. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is getting down, real. If you want to convoluted, take a stream down P River. Go for it. I I don't think that the upside is there for Philip Rivers. This uh, he. You know, when when you're favored by this much and the defense is this bad, I I see this entire second ha half just being run the ball, run the ball. You can't stop us running the ball. It's super easy. Now that's not to say you didn't get up to a lead by having you know a T. Y. Hilton touchdown and a you know, Paris Campbell touchdown to Philip Rivers, but the ceiling is capped, is what I'm saying for Philip Rivers. We'll I don't find expect one more middling quarterback that you like later in the show, and then we'll make another water bet where I'll bet with Phillip Rivers because I want you to lose to Phillip Rivers in week one one way or another. I will not participate no. in anything with P. River. You don't whether want Whether it's to... a water bet. No, because I know what that cup is going to be filled with, <laughs> oh, and I don't oh, want it. Oh, 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 no. So, um, no. No, I mean, it, it, here's it, the thing is, is if I were to make a bet against Phillip Rivers that's just on fantasy points, I could very well lose because I think Phillip Rivers is – a safe enough option. Like he's he's not gonna have a bad game. The reason I don't want Philip Rivers is because he's not gonna have a great game. I think he could. I think he could have a great game. Impossible. Okay. T. Y. Hilton's in your lineup. Paris Campbell or Michael Pittman in week one if you want to take a shot. Paris Campbell. I would go Pittman. So you gotta break the tie there. I go Paris Campbell in that situation. Jack Doyle, week one. No yeah. Trey Burton. I, I, I like it. He was almost yeah. my start of the week. Uh, I think that he is absolutely a fine pivot if you've got someone like Herndon and, and Doyle's on the I, the, the waivers. I can't imagine being in the situation where I drafted Jack Doyle to start him this week. I mean, it's a great <laughs> defensive. I'm not. I'm not trying to take anything away from Doyle's potential to have it's, four catches and 44 yards. I'm just saying, I with all the the popular and, tight ends that people yeah, have drafted, I, I get it. But it's it's Philip Rivers. We've seen him hyper target the tight end over and over again. And if you're going to watch this matchup. Keep your eyes on the rookie from Jacksonville, LaVisca Chenault, who uh, he was a second round pick. He's a great player. And on top of that, you know, there's some news, some whispers trickling out, uh, very vague of LaVisca actually being far more involved in the running game. In the running game yeah. uh, and then especially with Ozigbo going on the IR. All right. Uh, Naeem Hines. I, I would prefer Naeem Hines in a matchup where I think it's going to be difficult. Maybe the yeah. the, the Colts are down. Yeah, it would have it would have to be PPR a PPR only. league, yeah. and this is I, you you want him in a negative game script. I, yeah, I'm you. not starting Naeem Hines this week. Starts of the week. Our first starts of the week segment for 2020. Let's kick it off at the quarterback position. I'm going. Uh, against the grain a little bit here with the Chicago matchup. I'm okay. going with Matthew Stafford. Uh, last year at home, 310 passing yards per game, three touchdowns. Didn't face Chicago last year. The weapons, they're, they are plentiful. The running back position, is it AP? Is it Swift? Is it carry on? It's an amalgamation of disappointment there. Matthew Stafford is going to continue doing what he did last year. So I'm going to take him in week one. I have confidence to start him. My start of the week is going to be Matt Ryan. This is an even year. It's 2020, <laughs> and if you know anything about his history, he's great in the even years, bad in the odd years. But in, in reality, he's obviously great for fantasy in general. He's going to throw for a ton of yards. This is a matchup at home that I like against Seattle. They lost to Davian Clowney, which is going to be nice for uh, the offensive line holding up for Matt Ryan. It's a 49-point over-under, which is one of the highest of the week. And they're only giving up two points here. So they're implied to score some points. I don't think it's going to come via Todd Gurley on the ground. So I'm I'm happy to start Matt Ryan against Seattle. And my start is Josh Allen against the New York Jets. That uh, secondary is absolutely depleted. Let's uh, let's see if they let Josh Allen and, and his new weapon, Stephon Diggs, cook a little bit here that's in week a, one. That's an easy button right there. Josh Allen's going to smash. Mark Ingram, my running back start of the week against Cleveland, kicking okay. off the season for whatever reason. People just, it's getting more boring to have Mark Ingram on your roster but, and play him. But Andy, what about J.K. Dobbins? Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Mark Ingram was a smash start all last year. The The matchup is not intimidating to me. This team, uh, Mark Ingram, put him in your lineup. 
Yeah, Gus Edwards, I'm, I'm pretty sure he had 133 carries last year. It's not it's not like they weren't involving other running backs in this game. I, I, I like your push towards Mark Ingram being a good start because he is a good start. He always is. Uh, my start of the week is going to be way better, though. James Conner is currently healthy, and so therefore he is awesome at fantasy football. Uh, the, the matchup against the New York Giants is excellent. This is the player I was very desperately targeting in last night's League of Record draft. Andy, unfortunately, took him one spot ahead of me. I, I think the, the matchup is perfect. The uh, team is back with Big Ben. Everything is that Tomlin has ever done has been on the the shoulders of, of a three-down running back. I lo absolutely love James Conner. I think he's going to be – you know, yes. he, he he was drafted behind so many guys that I would start him over. I would start him over Kenyon Drake, and that's my guy who I took wow. him first. Okay, with the San Francisco matchup. Yeah, and, yeah. matchup based. That's wild. Yeah, if, if you took James Conner in the fourth or the fifth round, uh, just enjoy that because yeah. it will be very fun. Uh, I took Benny Snell with my last pick, just for the record. That's well, not, <laughs> not a dumb thing to do. It's not a terrible thing to do. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday, but David Johnson is my running back start of the week. The over-under, super juicy. Look, it's football time. You want, you want to get a guy in this game. It's David Johnson. Uh, in Houston, they are nearly 10-point dogs, and the, the targets are going to have to go to someone besides the flying V. I think David Johnson's in for a... Uh, some serious work in the receiving game. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see him yes, succeed there. I would love Me to too. see it. Too. I drafted David Johnson after you took <laughs> James Conner. All right, Stephon Diggs is my wide receiver start of the week. Oh, the Bills, they're six and a half point favorites. It's shiny new toy time, and Stephon Diggs is going to get every chance against a Jet secondary that no longer has Jamal Adams, that is in shambles. And, uh, you know, it just pairs with Mike's start of the week, Josh mm -hmm. Allen at the quarterback position. You want a player like Stephon Diggs. I mean, some wide receivers, they talk a little bit more. They need a little bit more attention. Diggs has fallen into that category. Why not make a great first impression with Stephon Diggs in week one, get him heavily involved in this offense, and show off um, the upgraded Josh Allen passing attack Stephon Diggs, uh, Jason, I know he's on your roster, so oh, you're, you, you're thrilled about that. You love to hear it. Uh, my start of the week at wide receiver is Tyler Lockett, my guy on the season. Uh, this is, uh, you know, on the other side of the ball from Matt Ryan, where you are favored on the road in Atlanta, a great defense to play against. I think Russ comes out, has a great week one, and Tyler Lockett is, you know, it, people are drafting him behind DK Metcalf. I think that's going to be a mistake. And I got Deshaun Jackson. Uh, he projects to see a lot of Fabian Moreau, who uh, poor coverage, you know, <laughs> allowing reception on nearly 80% of the targets uh, thrown when he is in defense. And they're they're hurting at wide receiver. They're hurting at the pass catcher position in Philadelphia. DJX is the number one. And narrative street, but week one, DJX, he always comes through with a smash play. All right. My final start of the week is Hunter Henry, tight end, Los Angeles Chargers, taking on the Bengals. You guys, uh, why don't you guys name name the uh, the second wide receiver in Los Angeles right now? Hunter Henry. Yeah, that's pretty much your answer. <laughs> I mean, the depth chart is oh, wait. thin. Actually, my reports are saying Jason Moore. He's actually on the second team right now. I'm Ooh. sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Moore. You're not Moore. a starter? But wait, He's wait, not wait, even wait, wait. a starter. Wait, practice squad? Uh, no, I'm on the 53. <laughs> yep, you're on the 53. That's so right. Hunter Henry, by process of look, Mr. Necessary this week. Yep, taking that task. Uh, in Cincinnati, the matchup is is soft. So I will go Hunter Henry. Yeah, for start of the week at tight end, I I wanted someone lower. Whoever you drafted is probably who you're going to go with. But if you if you grab someone and you hate that matchup, Eric Ebron has been getting a lot of buzz. He I has. believe he has a very good week one in this same game against the New York Giants, who last year couldn't guard tight end. They they didn't make any personnel changes that scared me against tight end, and he's being utilized all over the field. If you want to talk about a guy who can come away with a touchdown and be top five this week, I think Eric Ebron is is in play. And I'm going with uh, my guy here, Blake Jarwin, and not just because he's my guy, but there is absolute reason to, to believe in Blake Jarwin this week. The matchup with the Rams, there should be plenty of points uh, going around in this matchup. And Amari Cooper, he should see Jalen Ramsey, and if, what we know about Amari Cooper is when he has an elite corner on him, he often disappears. 
And Michael Gallup. Now, is it possible Ramsey will be slowed down because he'll be carrying all that money? <laughs> this is possible. Uh, and Michael Gallup. A tuba full of might money. Might see a, a lot of Troy Hill, who was a great second cornerback. You know, so maybe CeeDee Lamb comes out and he, uh, you know, shows off in, in his uh, rookie debut. But I think that the middle of the field will be open for Blake Jarwin to eat. All right. All the rankings for week one, the start, sit, tool, Foot Clan community. You can find it all at thefantasyfootballers.com. One more uh, heralded award-winning mm. segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week. Football's back, baby. It's time to kick some butts. For week one, you know you want the Saints' Will Lutz. That's that's a classic. Yeah, that's a good one. That's classic. a good one. I I am I'm thrilled to have that kicker centric segment back on the show for 2020. Well, I know it was a lot of negotiation to mm -hmm. I tried to get, get the away, contract but. to get the contract on that again. Um, and it's important in week one. You don't want to just kick some butt. You want to kick some butts. That's right. You have Multiple. to do that if you want to rhyme with lutz. That is <laughs> just, if, if one butt kick. That's a failure. Right. right. Yeah. No. Good point. All right, uh, Foot Clan Game Day Alerts at jointhefoot.com. Mike is back with Sunday Live one hour before Sunday kickoff. So uh, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. That click, is correct. Click subscribe, click the bell, be alerted. Mike will Mike will be there with that JTT hair mm. giving you um, some very voluminous fantasy advice on Sunday. I believe it's voluminous. Voluminous. There you go. <laughs> voluminous. All right. We'll be back with more matchups tomorrow. Enjoy the football it's tonight. Football we made it. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.